try this. Okay. And oh, sorry about that. All right. So today uh, we are covering uh, chapter seven, which is all about survey sampling and inference here. Okay. So if you think back to an uh, early portion of our class, I said that statistics is all about making conclusions from limited data. Okay, And in Chapter 7, we are uh, making entry into that topic of inference. Okay, So statistics is about... making conclusions from limited data. All right? And the idea is we have a population. Okay? The population is too big to be studied directly. So instead, we take a small piece out of the population, and this is called a sample. And based on what we see in the sample, we will make conclusions about the population. Populations, um, usually <clears throat> we want to, the types of conclusions we want to make are we want to make conclusions about properties of the population. So for example, if the thing that we're interested in in the population is a numeric variable, we might be interested about the average or the mean value of uh, that variable in the population. So maybe we want to know what is the average age of, um, I don't know, people who own an iPhone. So the population would be everybody who owns an iPhone, and what we want to know is the average age <coughs> of people who own an iPhone. So in that case, the property that we're interested in is the mean age of the population of iPhone users. All right, so one example. What is the mean age of iPhone users? Okay, and so the population is everyone who uses an iPhone. Okay, there are too many people to get this number. Uh, to have to try to survey everyone. Okay, so this is this is the population is too big to study directly. Okay, and the property of interest, which is also known as the parameter. 
this is the mean age of iPhone users. Okay, just want to make sure that uh, everything I'm writing up here is legible uh, for those of you in the back. Is this is this okay working out? All right. <clears throat> And uh, I'm writing at an okay speed. You guys are able to keep up. This is okay? Good. Okay. So that's one example. All right. So the parameter of interest is every uh, is the mean age of iPhone users, and the population in this case is everyone who uses an iPhone. Okay. All right. Or another example. Okay. Um, so maybe we have a categorical variable, and we might want to be we might be curious what percentage of Instagram users are female. Okay. So what is the population in this example? Everyone who uses Instagram, so all Instagram users. So for those of you who don't know, Instagram is a social media app. You take photos and you share them. So the population is all Instagram users. Okay. What is the parameter? Not female, but what percentage of female? the percentage of female users, okay? The percentage. Okay. So I want to just make sure that it's clear that in this example, our variable is numeric. When we are looking at age, we have a numeric variable. And over here, our variable is categorical. Okay, and what is the variable that we're looking at here? Gender, right? Male or female. <clears throat> okay, I'll let you guys write that down. Okay, so uh, in this uh, in this chapter, we're all about looking at a population. From that population, we're going to take a sample, and based on that sample, we're going to make conclusions about a parameter in the population. And that parameter might be the mean which means we're dealing with a numeric variable, or it could be a percentage or proportion, which means we're dealing with a categorical variable. Okay. So uh, I, it, today we're going to just start off with categorical variables, and in the future we'll move on into numeric variables. Okay. So again, the idea we have a population. It's too big, so we take out a sample. Ideally, our sample is representative of the population. So that conclusions about our sample can be generalized to the population. Okay. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> one way to um, to help make sure that we get a representative sample. It doesn't guarantee that we get a representative sample, but one way that should give us a representative sample is simple random sampling. Okay. And simple random sampling is the idea that we go to our population, we have a list of every single person in the population or every single thing that can be selected in the population, and we select people one at a time at random. Okay? So simple random sampling requires... Oops. This list is called a sampling frame. Okay. And then we select individuals at random, one at a time. from the sampling frame. Okay. This will give us a simple random sample. Okay. And a sim simple random sample should be representative of the population. Now, it's possible that by random chance it's not, but they should be representative of the population. Now, when you, um, when you take samples, sometimes you ask people, are you willing to participate in the sample or, or in the survey or, or different types of things? And for different reasons, people may choose not to participate in your survey or maybe, uh, you know, maybe you go to Target and they say, uh, if you respond to this survey within... 24 hours, you'll be entered into a chance to win a gift card or things like that. They're hoping to get um, a, a sample of people to respond to these surveys. But as we know, not everybody responds to these, uh, to these surveys, and so the, uh, the responses that they get may not necessarily be representative of the population. Okay, So when it comes to customer service surveys, usually... Um, most people's interactions with customer service are just average, okay? Usually, you go to the store, you ask them to do something, they do what you're, they're supposed to do, and that's the end of the transaction, okay? And that's probably most customer service interactions. Every now and then, you might have a terrible customer service experience, okay? They're not doing, th you know, they mess things up, they charge you too much, they're refusing to refund your money, whatever, you might have a terrible customer service experience. Or every now and then you might get a very uh, very good customer service experience where you feel like the person went way above and beyond what they were supposed to do. Okay, But most of the time it's probably just average, nothing, nothing that exciting. However, when you look at customer service surveys that come in, usually you don't get a whole lot 
of average customer service experiences. You either get extremes. You get people who are very excited and willing to write a survey about the good customer service, or you might get people who are very angry and they're furious and they want to make sure that their complaints are heard. So if you were to look only at the responses of customer service surveys, you would think that there's only two types of people, those who are really excited and those who really hate everything. Um, but that's not the case, okay? Most experiences are probably average, but most of the time when you have an average experience, you don't bother to respond to the survey, okay? And so when we have things like that, where the sample is not representative of the population, we have something called a biased sample. So the example Okay. So most experiences are mundane and average. Okay. So Think of every time you've gone to a store and you've gone through a checkout, that's a customer service experience. Anytime you're interacting with a cashier or retailer of any kind, that is a general customer service experience. And most of the time, it's not very exciting. You can't really, you probably can't remember the name or face of the last person who checked you out um, at the store. <laughs> um, I came out wrong. Um, so, um, so most of those things are average, um, but survey responses will probably show um, very good or very poor experiences. And so there's all sorts of reasons for having um, bias, okay? And those are reviewed in page 299 of the book. Okay, different reasons for bias. And so we have uh, voluntary response bias, which would be the customer service surveys, okay? You also have non-response bias. Uh, which um, can be all sorts of things. For example, if, uh, if you were to do a telephone survey, is there a question about what I've written? Yeah, no problem. Voluntary? Uh, yeah. No, no, the, the one I, like, under it. Voluntary response bias. Oh, non-response bias. Yeah. Okay. Non-response bias. So voluntary response bias and non-response bias. Are you guys still able to read that in the back? I hope. We'll try to get this uh, digital form working for us. <clears throat> okay. And so um, non-response bias would be something like, uh, let's say you were conducting a, an, a survey and you decide to call uh, people's homes um, around 3 in the afternoon, okay? Now, when you do that, a lot of people will be gone at work, okay? And so uh, people who you might call someone and nobody answers, okay? All right, and so you will get non-responses from people who are away at work, uh, and the responses will be people who stay at home, okay? 
And so that will change the, uh, the type of sample that you observe. All right. Uh, so I leave it to you uh, to, in your homework this week to uh, just read a little bit more about sampling methods and, uh, and maybe some of the problems that could uh, arise in uh, sampling, okay? Okay, and so now this brings me to the topic of a sampling distribution. Oops. So uh, one of the questions I, I said, uh, or yeah, we have a question. So there was only two kinds of bias? Uh, two kinds of bias uh, mentioned in, uh, in this book, okay? There's, there's other sources of bias that exist, but, uh, but they're, not, um, they're not thoroughly covered, so we'll just, we'll just keep it to, uh, we'll just discuss those two, okay? Okay, so earlier on, I, I just posed this example of saying, you know, what percentage of Instagram users are female, okay? And whatever, I don't know the answer to that, okay? Or what percentage of Pinterest users are female, or things like that, okay? Um, I don't know. Now, there we have a population, and we have a categorical variable. The population is everybody who uses in, uh, Instagram or everybody uses Pinterest or whatever it is that we're talking about. And within that population, we have a categorical variable. The users are either male or female or identify as something else. And so um, that's what we are interested in, okay? Now, to answer that question, maybe, maybe um, we are somehow able to obtain a random sample of Instagram users. I don't know how, but let's say we were able to get a random sample of 100 users of Instagram, okay? Now, if somebody else obtained another random sample of 100 users, will those two samples look the same? No, those two samples will probably be different, okay? And in one sample, it might be 60% female. Okay, and another sample might be 55% female. And if somebody else were to take another sample, it might be another percentage uh, female. And, and so we don't know. So the question is, if every, you know, if we took all these different possible samples, what would the different per percentages, what would the distribution of percentages look like? Okay, and that is what we call a sampling distribution. So, um, let me uh, let me try another example here. Okay, imagine I've got uh, a giant vat of candy. Okay, um, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say uh, we've got Reese's Pieces candy. The um, you guys know Reese's Pieces? They look like M&Ms, but they have peanut butter inside. And what are the colors that you can get? Yeah, yellow, orange, and brown. Okay, so you can get yellow, orange, and brown. Okay? And so let's say we've got this giant tub, okay? And it's just like tons and tons of tons and tons of little pieces of candy, okay? Let's say this tub weighs, you know, 60 pounds. Okay, 60, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, 60 pounds of Reese's Pieces candy is probably like 200 bucks of candy there or something, or maybe more, I don't know. All right, and you want to know what percentage of my tub is, uh, I don't know, yellow pieces or something, okay? What percentage is this one color? Actually, I, I have a, there's a little app um, that we're going to run. To, uh, to demonstrate this, okay? So let's see. Okay. 
Oh, no. Okay, orange. So let's say we want to know what percentage of the tub is orange. Okay? All right, can you guys see the, the parallels between this and what percentage of Instagram users are female? Okay, we've got a big population. So this tub here represents the population. Okay, it's too big for us to count directly, and so we're going to take samples of it. And based on what we see in the sample, we're going to try to make conclusions about the population. Okay, so instead of asking what percentage of Instagram users are female, we're going to say what percentage of the tub is orange, okay? And so, again, we're going to say the tub is too big for us to uh, count all the pieces, count all pieces and find this per percentage directly. Okay, so instead, we will take samples. And based on what we see in the samples, we want to draw a conclusion about the population. Now, now, the question is, if different people took different samples, you know, what kind of variation will we see among the sample proportions, okay? So someone might grab a handful of Reese's pieces, and maybe they get a whole bunch of orange pieces, okay? Someone else grabs another uh, uh, handful of pieces, and maybe they only get a few orange pieces, okay? That's possible, right? So what kind of variation will we see in the uh, different percentages of orange? Will we see in the different percentage of orange candies in the samples. That's what we want to know. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. Or are you guys done writing? Okay. Yeah? No? No. Okay. I'll let you guys continue writing. <coughs> All right. So let's say Can you guys see this? Let me see if I can uh, blow this up here. Okay, so in the population, we are saying, now I'm, I'm defining this, I'm saying 30% of all the uh, candies in here are orange, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to take a random sample of 50 candies, okay? And so, um, well, let's see. So I'm going to click draw here, okay? And so here it's pulling different pieces, and we see some are brown, some are yellow. 
and uh, and we could see the orange candies that are being drawn. All right, and so it drew 50 pieces of candy, and out of those 50 pieces, 20 of them are orange. Okay. All right. So, what is that? How what? What is what percentage is 20 out of 50? 40 percent. Okay. So this sample had uh, 40 percent orange. Okay. So let me uh, just come over here and just write sample one. 50 pieces total. 20 are orange. So the percentage percentage orange is equal to 20 divided by 50 equal to 40%. Okay? And so to write that symbolically, we write p hat is equal to 0 0.40 or 0 0.4. Okay? That's how we say for one sample, the percentage orange was 40%. You guys are done writing. Some people write faster than others. That's okay. Okay, and so what we're doing is we're going to plot that point 40% and we're going to make a dot plot here. Okay, so let me just do this again. Again, we're drawing 50 pieces of candy out. All right, and, uh, and they're sorting the yellow from the brown. Okay, and so here... Um, we only got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight pieces were orange. Okay? And so the percentage there, our p hat, is 0 0.16. So let me just come back over here. In sample two, eight pieces out of 50. Okay? So p hat is equal to 8 divided by 50. So p hat is equal to 0 0.16 for sample 2. Okay. Is, there, is everybody okay with me with these different p hats that we're generating? Yes, question? There still 50 pieces total. Yeah, there's still 50 pieces total. Okay, so all of these, we'll say all samples have 50 pieces total. So in that one, only eight of them were orange, okay? And so the p hat that we see is 0.16. All right, so we'll try this again. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten orange, eleven orange pieces, okay? So we have a total of eleven orange pieces, and that means we have 22% orange. Okay, so are you, are you guys understanding what's happening here? Okay, and I'm going to do this a whole bunch of times. Okay, I'm going to turn off the uh, animation here. Okay, and so sample number four was not 22, was 24% orange. Okay, so we had uh, we had something else. Okay, I'm going to just draw another sample. Sample five was 30% orange. Okay, you guys don't have to write all of these down. Sample six was again 30% orange, and every time. We, uh, we draw this, 30% orange, it shows up down here in the dot plot, okay? I'm going to draw another sample. Sample 7 was 32% orange, and so we get a dot right there in the dot plot, okay, at 32%. Everyone's okay so far still, okay? So we'll just, uh, we'll do this a few more times. 24%, a dot right there. Uh, sample 9, 30%, another dot right there, okay? 34%, a dot right there. Okay, I'm going to do um, 10 samples at a time. Okay, and so when I do 10 samples, 10 more dots are going to show up in the dot plot. Okay, so we added 10 dots. So here I've done a total, now I've done another 10. And so we see more and more dots showing up here. Okay, and we're starting to see already a little bit 
you know, kind of these values seem to be more frequent. These ones are less frequent, and we haven't gotten anything out here or anything down here yet. Okay, but we'll just keep going. And we'll just see 40, 50, 60. So here we've done. So this represents 200 samples. Again, each sample had 50 candies in them. Okay, so this was a total of 200 different samples of 50 candies. And we see we're starting to get this, um, this shape here, okay, where values in the middle are more common, values out on the outside are less common, okay? Now, we, we seem to have, you know, th these weird things going on here. Uh, so let me just kind of crank this up, and we'll do uh, 100 samples, okay? So after 300 samples, this is what we have, okay? So I don't know if you can see, but there's these dots are tiny, and if we were to count them all, there would be a total of 300 dots. Each dot represents a different sample of 50 candies. Every time we took 50 candies, we counted the proportion that was orange. And so in this last one, 28% or 14 out of 50 were orange, okay? Is everyone still okay with what's happening here? Okay, so let me just uh, crank this up. Well, that's after 400 samples, after 500, 600, 700. So the dots have gotten so small that um, they just kind of look like lines now, okay? So we're adding more and more and more. Okay, and so this is after 4,000 samples. Now what does this look like? Yeah, it's starting to look uh, unimodal and symmetric, okay? It looks kind of like the normal distribution. It's not a perfect fit, okay? But um, here I can overlay the actual normal distribution. And we can see that what we observe empirically, this is from different simulations, this is 4,000 simulations. Each time we did a simulation, we drew 50 candies. And we looked at this, we see that it kind of fits the normal distribution. Um, like that, okay? Is this okay? So what we have here, these bars, this is our sampling distribution, okay? When you take a sample of 50 candies, you might get 30% orange or 32% orange or 34% orange, okay? It's not possible to get 33% orange when you have 50 candies, why not? Yeah, so 16 out of 50 would correspond to 30%. So if 16 pieces are orange, then you have a sample proportion of 32% orange, right? 16 divided by 50 is 32%. If you were to get 17 orange pieces, 17 divided by 50 would be 34% orange, okay? So you can, you, you can either have 16 orange pieces or 17 orange pieces or some other whole number of orange pieces, and so your proportion uh, is either going to be 32 or 34% when you look at a sample proportion, okay? So that's why we see um, only vertical, these vertical bars here to show that you can only get certain values, okay? However, the shape of the vertical bars looks a lot like the normal distribution and so to make our math easier, we're going to approximate all of these vertical bars with the normal distribution. Okay? So that's what we are doing with a sampling distribution. Okay? We want to know what kind of variation will we see in the different percentage of orange candies in the sample. And we saw in sample one, we got 40% orange. In sample two, we had 16% orange. And we did this many, many, many times, and we can see you can get all sorts of different things, okay? You can get 32% orange, okay? So maybe um, maybe I'll just write sample three. Maybe we had 16 pieces are orange. 
And so p hat for sample 3 would be 16 out of 50, or 32% orange, or 0.32, the proportion that's orange, okay? And so on. All right, so, um, you know, we continue to uh, simulate random samples of, um, you know, 50 pieces of candy, okay, with each sample. we record the sample proportion p hat we record the sample proportion p hat okay and uh, and we keep track of all of these track of all the different p hats we observe And when we make a dot plot, okay, we see uh, values in the middle are much more common. And we get something Ignore those. Uh... Okay, we get something that looks like this. All right, it's just a, a rough drawing. Okay, and so this is this is our sampling distribution. Sampling distribution of p hat. Okay, centered somewhere around 0.30. Okay, this looks a lot like the normal distribution. To the uh... okay, and so we're going to approximate this with the normal distribution. So let me just recap what we've seen and what we've done. Okay, we said. Uh, let me just save this here. Okay, so we said we have a giant tub of candies here. Okay, and uh, when we looked at the tub, we said thirty percent. 
30% of the candies in the tub are orange, okay? So somehow we know this. Uh, in the tub, 0 0.30 of the candies in the tub are orange. Okay. Oops. And so when we drew random samples out of there, uh, we found that the most common values for um, sample proportions for p hat is around 30%. And that makes sense, right? If 30% of the candies in the tub are orange, whenever you take a random sample of 50 candies, you should get something around 30% orange in your random sample, okay? And what we found is that, yeah, we get 30% orange, but sometimes we get more, sometimes we get less. Sometimes it's as low as 16% or even 12%. Maybe that happened, you know, once or twice. And sometimes it's as high as 42 or even 48%. It doesn't happen very often, but it's, it's possible, okay? But we can look at all these different things, and we see, you know, this looks a lot like the normal distribution, meaning values in the middle, 30%, 32%, 28% happen quite a bit, and values far away from that, sometimes they happen, but not quite as often, okay? And so we're going to approximate the sampling distribution, which is all the different proportions that we can observe when we take a random sample, and we're going to approximate the sampling distribution with the normal distribution, okay? So the population has 30% orange candies, okay? We repeatedly take samples of size n equal to 50. Okay, so when I say the population has 30% orange candies, that means p, not p hat, but p is equal to 0.3. Okay, use p. for the proportion in the population. Okay. Meanwhile, over here, use p hat for the proportion in, of a sample. So the population has 30% orange candies, or p is equal to 0.3. We repeatedly take samples of size n equal 50, and the resulting sampling distribution looks like the normal distribution. Okay, and so we have um, the normal distribution always has a mean and standard deviation, right? Okay, so the properties of our normal distribution that we will use to approximate the sampling distribution, okay, normal distribution that we use
will have mean mu equal to p and standard deviation sigma equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. Okay, so this is this is the key properties of our sampling distribution. Okay. Again, what is P? Proportion of what? Of the population. So in our case, P is 0.3. Okay? So that means the normal distribution that we use to approximate the sampling distribution has a mean of what value? 0.3, right? That goes in the center. And the standard deviation will be P times 1 minus P. So it's going to be 0.3 times 1 minus 0.3, which is 0.7. So it's going to be 0.3 times 0.7 divided by N. What's N? N is 50, your sample size. Okay? So over here, so this means our mean is 0.3, and our standard deviation is going to be the square root of 0.3 times 1 minus 0.3, or 0.7, divided by 50. Okay? Let me just, oops, sorry. So I'm going to do, uh, for the standard deviation, I'm going to do 0.3 times, um, like, well, you can probably do 1 minus 0.3 in your head. And I'm going to do 0.3 times 1 minus 0.3 divided by 50. And I hit enter there. Uh, it's doing that. Sometimes if your calculator does this, you have to, you have to hit uh, setup and you want line IO. Okay. And then, and you want norm 2. All right, so let me just do that again. 0 0.3 times 1 minus 0 0.3 divided by 50. And then I'm going to take the square root of that. And so my standard deviation is 0 0.0648. Okay. So I have a mean of 0.3 and a standard deviation of 0 0.0648. So far so good? It's hard to get a reading on you guys. Still writing. Still writing. Okay. Right away. I'll keep writing. Yeah, so we'll, we will use this in a moment here, okay? So our sampling distribution, which is really these vertical lines... We're going to approximate with the normal distribution, and our approximation is good enough, okay? And this normal distribution will have this mean of 0.3 and standard deviation of 0 0.0648, okay? Now, prior to the midterm, the week before, so two weeks ago I covered the use of the normal distribution along with the normal table and all of that stuff, okay? Now, I know some of you understand it very well, and you guys did very well on the midterm exam, and I was quite happy. Some of you struggled with this normal distribution, okay? And if that was you, um, you need to make sure you understand the normal distribution because pretty much everything from here on out will make heavy use of the normal distribution and its cousin, the t-distribution. And if you struggled with that stuff, the future weeks are going to be terrible, okay? So make sure you understand the normal distribution. Which one was the normal distribution? 
It was the one that looked like this with the hill, with the with the table. Okay. All right. Where you find z-scores, and based on your z-scores, you look it up in the table, and you get percentages. That's what we did with the normal distribution. So you want to make sure you're comfortable with that. Okay. Also. It's an application of that. Application. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're st it's still the same normal distribution, but we're we're applying it in the use of sampling distributions here. Okay. And so, also, I know some of you struggle with decimals. Okay. And I noticed this on the midterm exam as as I was grading things, and also on quizzes as I grade them. You can't struggle with decimals. All right. You're, we're going to be dealing with a lot of decimals here. Okay. Because we've got proportions. And, you know, there's a huge difference between 0 .0648 and 0 .00648 or 0 .648, okay? Moving these decimal places around makes a huge difference. And so, you, you know, you can't be making silly mistakes or critical mistakes by putting decimals in the wrong spot or doing things like that, okay? So just please, please, please... Make sure you have a handle on decimals. Okay. I wish there was a, like a placement exam to make sure everybody could do their decimals. Um, but uh, anyway, that's what that's what we got. Okay, so let's let's try this out. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let me just uh, copy this. Okay, so these are going to be the properties of our sampling distribution that we're using and we will save this and paste that here uh, I don't want that okay so these are the properties of the sampling distribution that we have right okay so this is so I'm going to write a problem here and it says, uh, the giant tub of Reese's Pieces um, is 30% orange. Okay. We randomly select a sample Of 50 pieces of candy. Okay. And let we want to know what is the probability that when I draw a sample of 50 pieces of candy, what's the probability that I get over 40% um, orange candies? So this is the question. What is the probability that this sample of 50 pieces has over 40% orange candies? I just want to make sure this question makes sense. Do we understand what I'm asking here? Okay. So again, when you, whenever we take a random sample out of the tub, okay, we stir up the tub and we get, grab like a, a scoop of 50 pieces of candy. Okay. When we do that, maybe I get a bunch of orange pieces. Maybe I don't get a bunch of orange pieces. Okay. I could have 10 orange pieces. I could have 15 orange pieces, I could have 20 orange pieces, okay? I want to know what's the probability that I get 40% or more orange pieces. So in a sample of 50 pieces, 40% would correspond to 20 orange pieces. So basically I'm asking, if I take a random sample of 50 candies, what's the probability that I have 20 or more orange pieces excuse me, 20 or more orange pieces of candy in this random sample. 
That's what I'm asking here. What's the probability that this sample of 50 pieces has over 40% orange candies? Okay. So to answer this, we're going to use the properties that we know of the sampling distribution. Okay. So here we're not asking if, if I just said if I'm taking one piece of candy at random, what's the probability that this piece of candy is orange? 30%, right? Because the giant tub is 30% orange. So if I take one piece of candy, there's a 30% chance that it's orange. Okay? But that's not what I'm asking. I'm taking a sample of 50 candies, and I'm not asking what's the probability that they're all orange, because that's very unlikely. But I'm asking what's the probability that 40% or more are orange? Okay? And to answer that, we are using what we understand about the sampling distribution. Okay, so we said whenever you take different samples, we know that it follows a normal distribution where the mean is 30%. Okay, and we said th these are the properties of the sampling distribution. We've got um, we have the sampling distribution. Okay. And we said the mean is equal to P. All right, so in our case, P is what? 0.3. So our mean is 0.3. And when we read the problem, we have 50 pieces of candy. So let me just circle these things. P is 0.3. And we're taking 50 pieces of candy, so that means N is equal to 50. And so we know that these are the properties. The mean of our sampling distribution is that mu is equal to p, and that sigma is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. And we've already done the math there, and so we know that the standard deviation is going to be 0 0.0648. Okay? <coughs> so we're using these properties here. Okay? And I want to know what is the probability that over 40% of my random sample of 50 is orange. Okay? So what do I have to do? It's a normal model problem. What do I do? What's the next step? Okay. Well, before we get to the z-score, what, what do I have to do? And before I go to the z table, I have to find my z score, right? So z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. Okay, so what is my x in this case? 0.4. Okay, because I'm asking what's the probability of getting 40% or more, which corresponds to 0.4. What is my mu? 0.3. And what's my standard deviation? 0 0.0648. Okay. So I still, you know, I still have my answer here, 0 0.0648 in the uh, in the calculator. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do parentheses 0.4 minus 0.3 close parentheses divided by the answer because I still have 0 0.0648 showing up as my answer there, right? Okay, and I hit enter, and I get a z-score of 1.54. Do you guys miss that? Yeah? Should I do that again? Okay, well, I'm just going to do uh, parentheses 0.4 minus 0.3, because that's on the numerator, and I'm dividing by 0 0.0648. Now, the other one had a little bit of had a few more decimals in there. So I do point, you know, on the numerator I'm going to have 0.1, and I'm dividing that by 0 0.0648, and I get 1.54 as my z-score. Okay, so my z-score is equal to 1.54. So now what do I do? So z is equal to 1.54, and I look this up in the table.
Okay? So let's see. So standard normal cumulative probabilities, 1.5 and the column, 0 0.04. Where is my pencil right here? 1.5 and 0.04 right here. Okay? So I'm looking at 0.93H2. Yeah? Okay, so when I look up in the table, the table gives... 0.9382, which is the area to the left. Do I want the area to the left? No. No. Okay, I want the area to the right, because we're looking at our picture. We want the area to the right. So how do I get this area? I do 1 minus 0.9382, and what is the answer I get there? 1 minus 0.9382. 0 0.0618. Okay? So, that is the answer to my question. What is the probability that this sample of 50 pieces has over 40% orange candies? The probability is 0 0.0618. Okay? So if the giant tub is 30% orange, when I take a scoop of 50 candies out, I have about a 6% chance, a little bit more than a 6% chance that 40% are orange or more. 40% or more are orange. How does that feel? Good? All right, let's try. Let me have you guys try an, an example then, okay? So we're going to um, change this up just a tiny bit, okay? So let's say now I've got a giant tub of M&M candies. All right? And let's say in the tub um, 18% of the candies... are green. Okay? And you take, you decide to take a random sample of 80 pieces of candy. And I'm going to ask, what is the probability that your sample of, of M&Ms is less than 20% green? All right, so go ahead and try that out.